The Wolves go on the road one more time this season, but run headlong into the wrath of Wingate. We'll have the highlights. What it's like to lead the new women's wrestling team. Head coach Donnie Stevens stops by to tell us. And while you're listening to play-by-play -play action, what's going on behind the scenes? We'll give you a look inside the booth. All this and all the latest scores and highlights coming up on Wolves Weekly. From the Langford Center Studios at Newbury College, this is Wolves Weekly. I'm Al Della Chica. Well, there's no other way to say it. The 2024 season has been challenging for the Newbury football team. The Wolves contended with injuries to key players, with opponents ready to take advantage of the opportunity, and they also lost the week's competition in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. With the end of the season just two games away, the 3-5 and five Wolves headed to Wingate hoping to close its road schedule on a high note. But the Bulldogs had other ideas. Our Paul Fisher was there and filed this report. The Newberry Wolves went on the road to face the Wingate Bulldogs. The Wolves entered the game plagued by injuries while Wingate fights for the top seed in the conference. This contributed to the first time Newberry has been shut out since October of 2018. Newberry won the toss and chose to get the ball in the second half. The Bulldogs took the field, led by Brooks Bentley at quarterback. A big rush by Noah Bell helps set up a six-yard touchdown for O'Brien Barnett. The Wolves were led by Ja'Cory Martin at quarterback and went three and out. Three plays later, the Bulldogs struck again on a 44-yard connection to Austin Kane. This put Wingate up 14-0 early. On the next possession, Newberry took a six-yard sack and recovered their own fumble before they gave the ball back. The Wolves' defense had a great stop and forced a punt. On Wingate's next possession, they drove 62 yards on 10 plays when Bentley connected with Evan McRae for a four-yard touchdown. The Wolves got the ball back with four minutes left in the half. A big rush from Traquel Murray and a series of penalties helped put the Wolves deep in Wingate territory. Newberry went for it on a fourth and two situation from the six-yard line. They didn't get it, and the score at halftime was 21-0. The Wolves got the ball to start the second half. They were unable to do anything with it. The punt put the Bulldogs in good position, and three plays later, Evan McRae reeled in his second touchdown. The Wolves took the field, now led by freshman Coleman Gray. Gray completed three of five passes for 35 yards before both teams traded punts. Newberry's next possession saw Coleman Gray's pass intercepted by Daquan Mosley into scoring territory. Noah Bell then punched in a touchdown, making the score 35-0. Late in the fourth quarter, Caleb Bonesteel would make a 34-yard field goal. The final score was 38-0. The Wolves are at home next week for the final game of the season, and we'll have that report. Paul C. Fisher, NCTV. And there you have it. Newberry is shut out in its final road game of the season. Although Newberry held Wingate to 17 first downs, that was more than enough for Wingate to post 38 points. The Wolves ran for 187 yards and drove into Wingate territory four times, including once to the five-yard line. And six Wolves had runs of over 10 yards. But none of this could make anything happen on the scoreboard. Kobe Taylor managed a couple of quarterback sacks for losses of 12 yards, a forced fumble, and five total tackles. And Luke Taylor and Jay Stevens also had key tackles. The Wolves are now 3-6 and six on the season and 3-4 and four in conference play. And you know, we talk about the play-by-play -play action. And I got to tell you, this was one of the roughest games that we had to talk about play-by-play. You have to look for any silver lining. And one of those silver linings, though, is a lot of young players that are going to be coming up and I think going to be making a big impact, especially next season. Now it's basically just do what you can, save the season, get experience, and get on to the next game. And that next game is next week. 
The Wolves close out the 2024 season when they welcome Emery and Henry to Setzler Field. We'll have more on that game later in the program. Wolves Weekly will continue in a moment. Mom was always organized, but she started forgetting to pay her bills on time. And she'd buy the same gifts over and over. Telling the girls about my Alzheimer's diagnosis was really hard. At first we had our cries, but then we were like, okay, let's make a plan. Early detection gave us time to adapt together. It's so important for you to think about what you can do and making the most of what you have. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Hey, boss. Okay. I said I'm fine. Eyes forward. Don't drive distracted. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. They both keep me motivated to go to school, and they see that if I do it, like they can do it too, you know? I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Wolves Weekly. I'm Paul C. Fisher. Newberry College offers a wide variety of sports for competitors to participate in and spectators to watch. But they also recently added a new one, that being the women's wrestling program. Here to shed a little bit of light on the new program is the inaugural head coach, Coach Johnny Stevens. How are you today? Great, thanks for having me, I'm happy to be here. Coach, we're excited for this, really happy to have you on and excited about the program, really. Yeah, it is exciting to build something from uh, ground zero. Uh, it's special, I think. The girls are, are looking forward to building a culture and creating one instead of walking into one that exists. So I think that's a, a pretty unique opportunity for them. Right. Tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of your coaching background, what brought you to Newberry, things of that sort. Yeah, well, I. Uh, Wrestled since I was four years old. Uh, you know, graduated from high school in California. I went to Cal State Bakersfield, wrestled for four years there. Went back to West Covina High School where I graduated from, took over the coaching duties. And uh, my wife and I coached there together for about 18 years. Uh, I was also volunteering with USA Wrestling with uh, various age group teams, going to World Championships, Pan American Championships. Uh, and that kind of led into opportunities to coach in college. Uh, my first job was uh, in Kentucky at a small college in you know, the southeast, deep dark hills of eastern Kentucky. Uh, but we loved it there for 10 years. Uh, I was actually down here on the lake fishing uh, during the summer when the athletic director called and asked if I knew anybody that would be interested in starting the program. Uh, fishing was so good I said I had, to, I had to give it a shot. So I came in and, and I really loved the school, the administration, uh, had a great visit with the men's team and the men's coaches, so I just felt like this was a, a great opportunity for me. Wow, that's incredible. What does it mean to you to be able to be in a position like this, kind of be the inaugural coach, um, the first of something, and to be yeah, able to I kind like, of build something? I like, I like that. Uh, another thing that we were talking with during the recruiting process is that they're, they're making history, uh, being the first ever. Next year will be an actual NCAA fully sanctioned sport, which is making history again. So I think that that's special when you have an opportunity to do something like that. No, truly. What do you think that says about Newberry Athletics or Newberry College? I think they're forward thinking. Uh, women's wrestling is, is fast growing. Uh, I know our athletic director uh, worked at a school where wrestling was really successful and 
he wanted to bring that to Newberry. Uh, it's growing at the high school level uh, rapidly. They've had two state championships, and I expect the numbers to double, uh, maybe even more than double, for probably the next six or seven years. So I think it's great that Newberry is offering uh, opportunities for local kids to come and, and have fun, uh, get an education, and, and be a part of something special with uh, Newberry Athletics. Yeah. What would you say are some of the, the biggest advantages to bringing a program like this, bringing women's wrestling? The area is a big advantage. Uh, the diversity of the community, not just the college, I think is, is awesome. Uh, you know, we've got a little bit of everything. You're not too far from the city. Uh, you've got plenty of wildlife and country around. Uh, the campus community is amazing. Uh, you know, I have all freshmen right now pretty much, and it's, it's awesome to see that they have friends outside of their sport that they hang out with here. I, something I really like, and uh, I'm impressed with that. That's really cool. Coach, what would you say is something you're the most excited for either this season or kind of bring in this program to the community, or what would you say is something you're in the most anticipation of this year? Uh, it wouldn't really be this year. It's, I want to see these kids graduate. You know, I want them to, to walk out of here with the degree and uh, feeling like these were four or five of the best years that they ever had, you know, that they made some important relationships that could further them in, in their life goals. Uh, I hope they meet their significant other while they're here. Uh, those are the kinds of things that I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, winning and losing will take care of itself. Uh, as, as long as our kids love each other, then we'll be good. I really love that. And I love that you're kind of showing you care about them a little bit more deeply. I have one more question for you, Coach. What is the way that you think we could best support you, best support your program and the things that you are building? I think just keep being Newberry. Uh, seeing Wolves Weekly, uh, you know, on, on the web is awesome. Uh, it's sharing it with friends and family is a big deal. And I think that it's really putting Newberry in, in the limelight where maybe it hasn't been before. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate that. And we really appreciate you taking the time being here today. If you want to learn more about the women's wrestling program or catch any of their schedule, see score updates or updates on any news, you can go to NewberryWolves.com. Wolves Weekly will be back in just a moment. Life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome. Pre-diabetes does. One in three adults has prediabetes, but with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. And you can change the outcome. Take the one minute prediabetes risk test today. Go to doihaveprediabetes.org. Food isn't just fuel to live, it's fuel to grow. My family relied on public assistance to help provide meals for us. These meals fueled my involvement in theater and the arts as a child, which fostered my love for acting. The Feeding America network of food banks helps millions of people put food on the table. When people are fed, futures are nourished. Join the movement to end hunger, and together we can open endless possibilities for people to thrive. Visit feedingamerica.org slash act now. Life's daily battles are not meant to be fought alone. We're not powerless so long as we don't lose sight of what's important. Don't be afraid to seize that moment to talk to your friends. Cloud, you okay? Because checking in on a friend can create a safe space. The first step on our new journey. Are you coming? Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Seize the awkward. It's totally worth it. It's important to get a flu shot each and every year because flu viruses are constantly changing and immunity from the vaccine decreases over time. Flu vaccines are updated annually to work against that year's viruses. The best time to get your shot is in the fall, but getting it later can still help. Getting a flu shot lowers your risk of getting sick. And if you do happen to get flu, it's likely to be less severe. NCTV Newberry. There's nothing like the thrill of being at a game and sitting in the stands, watching the action unfold right before your eyes and ears. But when you can't make it to the game, the next best thing is watching it. Several of Newberry's teams stream their games over the internet. 
and you can watch them right here on Flow Sports. But while you sit and enjoy the game broadcast, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes to bring those words and images to you. And some of those words come from Newberry students. Producers Paul Fisher and Johnny Felder talked to two of them and found out what it's like inside the booth. For so many people, sports are a way of life. Sports bring a culture that many live and breathe. For some though, sports more specifically, commentating sports, brings out a truly different side. Newberry College offers students the ability to use their voice in many different ways, and commentating is one of them. Students dive into each sport far deeper than a typical spectator may. Students may become the bridge between the action and the audience. We were able to sit down with some of Newberry's commentators. We discussed the great opportunity, ways they prepare, and why they enjoy being behind the headset so much. Uh, my name is Alex Daly. Johnny Federer. What does your preparation look like before you call the game? Well, this is my first time I ever actually called a game, so uh, kind of just wanted to make sure since we were we had a game here that was two teams that weren't ours. Like, I, I know our Newberry field hockey team quite well with all the stuff we've done with them, but having the Saints and Bulldogs here, it's two unfamiliar teams for me. So I just kind of wanted to make sure. I knew who were the players to watch were just judging off the stats, just who I think is going to have the ball on their stick most of the game, because this is going to be a name I'm saying a lot. Um, just other anecdotes, like I went and talked to the Limestone head coach before this and figured out that she played field hockey here for four years, so that was a nice thing to say on air, but a lot of people didn't know that, and it's good to see how far she came after, uh, after playing here and being a head coach now, so it's just little things, that, little anecdotes that you can figure out and find. Pretty cool. So my preparation is I always write down any rosters, the rosters that they're playing, and it could be any other school or Newberry, and just write down all the facts about each player, schedules coming up, and then I also get my intro, write it, write it down in my notebook, and just pretty much do it like that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was a little scared to do play by play. A lot of my my uh, classmates in my school communications a lot of play-by-play -play and a lot of radio play-by-play -play. and it was never really something I was like interested in like I always thought it would be fun but I never really wanted to make that jump and actually do it so now being kind of stuck and with no options and having to do it myself it was a lot, was a lot of fun and I'm happy I had the opportunity to do it. What would you say is your favorite part about commentary? Hopping behind the headset and being able to be in an environment like this. Being able to do that really gives you a whole lot to look at, just as far as the game and the moments, but I really live for the moments though, just because you never know what could happen and it could be the greatest play that you could ever commentate. It's fun. I mean, considering a lot of the other stuff we do here, it's a little bit more laid back and casual. It's not very as stressful as a lot of the other things we do, so it's kind of a nice breather and uh, it was fun. It was a good time. My favorite part about doing this is just being able to gain experience in this, just to be able to pretty much have this out in the real world, you know? And truth be told, this is something that we really like to do, and just getting more experience at these type of games really helped me a lot. Just being able to do this is really a blessing. What does it mean? What do you think it says about Newberry, either athletics, Newberry communications, or Newberry as a whole? that they're able to have students I, didn't see scenario. I feel like it helps out the whole school a lot. We as Wolves Weekly been getting recognized a lot and just throughout the whole world pretty much we're getting recognized and we're getting noticed quick. The more we work, the more better we get every show and it's a great thing that everybody is doing their thing in the studio and just improving day by day and just taking it time by time, you know. And that's why I feel like, honestly, we should, new, the whole Newberry should get credit. I wonder if you know that I want the best for you. That I know what you're going through. I know things aren't easy, but you still show up. I wonder if you know that we can get help. We don't have to go through this alone. Let's see how far we can go. Love your mind. If you're buzzed and doing this,
make yourself feel okay to drive? ZWX. Uh, You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. Have you ever helped a fellow veteran? Yes. Yeah, I do my best reaching out to my brothers and sisters in arms. Have you ever asked for help yourself? Most of us, we're not gonna admit that we need to help. If you don't have someone to kind of help you guide those thoughts, it can be really bad. It's just a beautiful space when someone can trust you and say, listen, I need help. Welcome back to Wolves Weekly. I'm Al De La Chica, along with Levi Moore this week. And now let's get to the scoreboard and get you caught up with all the action that took place over the past week. In field hockey, the number one seeded Wolves hosted the South Atlantic Conference Tournament this past weekend at Sessler Field as they squared off against number five Mount Olive in the semifinals on Friday. Newberry held three separate leads in the game and even outshot the Trojans 7-0 in the fourth period. But eventually, the two teams took a 3-3 tie into overtime. However, just over one and a half minutes into the extra period, Mount Olive scored the game winner, taking the match 4-3 thus ending the Wolves' best season in history. Despite the loss, the Wolves ended with the most wins in a season with 15, were the number one seed in the tournament and hosted it for the first time and advanced to the semifinals for the fifth consecutive season. In women's soccer, the Wolves faced off against Anderson in the final regular season game of in the last week, coming away with a tough one to nothing loss. The conference record for the women stands at 1, 6, and 4 and concludes their season as they finish in 10th place. For the men, they also dropped their match against Anderson 3 to nothing. They needed a win to stay in contention for a possible playoff spot, but with the loss, the team ends their regular season with a record of 4, 8, and 1 and finish 11th in the conference. And in volleyball, the Wolves lost a crucial conference match against Tusculum last Friday falling 3 to nothing to the Pioneers. Then came home to Elazer Arena, where they dropped another 3 to 0 match to the first place Wingate Bulldogs. The Wolves are on the road this week to take on Catawba College. The volleyball team record in the conference is 4 and 11, and that puts them in a tie for 10th place. But a win at Catawba and a little help could find the Wolves back in contention for the final playoff spot. The two matches of the regular season that wrap up that campaign are this Friday and Saturday at home against Mars Hill and Emory and Henry. The new basketball season is underway and the men's team is off to its best start since 2017. The Wolves defeated Emmanuel University on Friday 81 to 75 and then backed that up with another dominant win against Southern Wesleyan University on Saturday with a score of 74 to 67. The games were a part of the Conference Carolina South Atlantic Conference Challenge Tournament held in Franklin Springs, Georgia. After an exhibition game this week against Campbell University, the Wolves will open up their home schedule next Wednesday, November 20th against Lenore Ryan. And in women's basketball, their season began at Barton on Friday, with the Wolves losing their first game in a tight 51-48 loss. However, they followed that up the next day in Tigerville against the North Greenville Trailblazers and came away with a 60-52 victory, giving first-year head coach Johnette Walker her first win of the season. The Wolves will be in action this week on the road playing against Augusta University. And last week, senior field hockey forward Tasman Bangert and freshman quarterback Ja'Cory Martin were named Newberry College South Carolina Army National Guard Players of the Week. Bangert led the field hockey team to a 2-1 record last week and helped the team be the number one seed in the SAC tournament. Martin moved from his receiver spot to quarterback late in the third quarter in the homecoming game against Limestone and had a 42-yard 40, touchdown run in the fourth quarter. You can find out more about these players of the week along with the latest news and highlights from Newberry Athletics at NewberryWolves.com. And the 2024 football season comes to a close on Saturday as the Wolves welcome Emory and Henry to sets their field. They've met twice before in 2022 and 23. And even though the Wolves prevailed both times, the games were close. And Levi, those two games were pretty crazy. Ten overtimes combined. Two in the first game where we won it with a squeaker. And then last year, 
eight overtimes, setting a D2 record, by the way. And you know what? Emory and Henry, they, you know, they came into the conference not too long ago, but they have proven to be formidable opponents. And that goes to show you, this year, they are third in the Mountain Division. They are not a pushover. This is going to be a tough game for Newberry to try to round out with a win here. That's right, yeah. You look at the past free, uh, previous years, we played, they played them really close, yeah, especially last year, that record, you know, eight overtimes, that was insane. Um, they're not a team we need to come in and sleepwalk against, you know, especially our past few weeks, we haven't looked too good. I think we really need to find our identity uh, on the offensive side. Um, you look at the injuries we've had, top two quarterbacks going down, um, some uncertainty on that side of the ball. Um, we just need to find, you know, whether it's Coleman Gray, um, whether it's Ja'Cory Martin, you know, they give you two different types of looks. Um, I think we just need to find somebody, stick with them, let them build their confidence, and um, just get the ball rolling on that side. Yeah, exactly. And I know defense is doing pretty good, but that offense has been struggling. Obviously, injuries, it's part of the game. And so that game against Emory and Henry will start at 1 p.m. on Saturday at Setzler Field. And if you can't be at the game. Jimmy Coggins and I will have the play-by-play -play for you right here on Flow Sports. In the meantime, that's this edition of the Wolves Weekly. I'm Levi Moore. And I'm Al Della Chica. Join us next time for more Wolves Weekly. Keep up to date on the latest in Newberry College Athletics with Wolves Weekly, available on Flow Sports and produced by NCTV Newberry.